Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Stephen. Today we celebrate the eve of Christmas Day. We acknowledge the traditional First Nations custodians here in Mianjan, Brisbane, home of the Turrbal and the Yugara peoples. We acknowledge their families and communities and we pay our respects to the past, present and emerging elders. The weekly newsletter is available on entry at each of the doors and the newsletter will enable you to participate fully in this afternoon's Mass. Please ensure that all mobile phones are turned off or switched to silent and that personal possessions are always kept on you. Out of respect for our congregation and for privacy reasons, it's requested that no individual photos or videos be taken during this Mass. Our celebrant this afternoon is Father Anthony Miller. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The people in darkness 
have seen a great light. This light has appeared to guide people along the way. The word has become flesh and dwells among us. God has become one, one like us so that we may become one like God. On this great night of celebration, I welcome you here to the Cathedral of St. Stephen, our regulars, our visitors, people from other parts of the country, other parts of the world. We gather here to celebrate a birth and a gift. May the gift of God's mercy be a great blessing for us all. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as people rejoice at harvest time, as people are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burnt and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders. And this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wide is his dominion in a peace that has no end. For the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. of the Lord, for he comes, he comes to rule the earth. Today is born a Saviour, Christ the Lord. With justice he will rule the world, he will judge the peoples with his truth.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and leave good lives and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. The word of the Lord. joy to all the world. Today is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went out to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea, to the town of David, called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn, She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, do not be afraid, listen. I bring you news of great joy 
a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly with the angel, there was a great throng of heavenly host praising God and singing glory to God in the highest and peace to people who enjoy his favour. The Gospel of the Lord. Mary Oliver is one of the English world's most popular contemporary poets. Her poetry was mostly about noticing the extraordinary amid ordinary things and discovering the hidden, hidden beauty in creation. In one of her reflections called Of Love, she begins by saying, I've been in love more times than once, thank the Lord, and goes on to describe some of her human loves, both lasting and fading. But then she moves beyond her human encounters and explores love in other forms. Of some of her loves, she writes, now carry my revelation with you. Some, some of my loves were trees or places or music flying above the names of their makers or clouds or the sun, which was the first and the best and the most loyal for certain who looks so faithfully into my eyes every morning. So I imagine such love of the world, its fervency, its shining, its innocence, and hunger to give of itself. I imagine this is how it began. A love which gives of itself is certainly how it all began but it is also how all this continues. The sun that rises faithfully each morn and looks into our eyes announcing brightly and clearly that the dark is fading and that newness has arrived with another chance to set things right is in reality the regular daily proclamation what we celebrate this night. Isaiah, the ancient prophet waited for the day when the people who walked in darkness would see a great light. And following on from Isaiah's hope, at the right time, the angel of the Lord appeared to, the sh to shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. This is the light that Mary Oliver contemplates, a light with such love for the world a light with its fervency, its shining, its innocence, and its hunger to give of itself. This is the true light of the world, the light of life. For whatever reasons we may have come here this night, let us contemplate the lessons of this dawning of the new light and what this teaches us about the mystery that we call God. Our world only ever keeps moving forward through simple daily acts of love and open-hearted commitment. Otherwise, the night would overwhelm us, for the darkness is real and it can break our spirits, our resolve, our faith, our hearts. But like the night, darkness is never forever. The light of dawn comes again to look into our eyes and hearts faithfully and regularly. We can trust in the coming of the light. 
That is why light is the most powerful symbol of Christmas. Whether it be the prophet's cry or angels lighting up the night sky or stars guiding us through the pitch black, all of these point to the great light, the shining, fervent, innocent light, so hungry to give of itself. In the feast of Christmas, we tell the story of this faithful light, the, the one who is not content to shine down from the heavens, but who is hungry to give of itself and shine forth from the midst of the world. Light is how creation began, a loving light, hungry to give of itself. But it is also how this world continues. Christmas doesn't happen just once, it happens all the time. The God who gives so willingly and so freely risks everything by coming amongst us as a helpless and defense, de dependent infant, seeking nothing more than our loving response. So every day, whenever we choose love and kindness and compassion, we are participating in the story of Christmas and responding to the delicate presence of God in our midst. Whenever we choose light over darkness, we become sharers in the great light that hungers to give of itself. Whenever we notice trees or places or music flying above the names of their makers or clouds, we are rejoicing in the clear light of day that helps us see such things. We often make the mistake of getting too complicated in our language about God, or too moralistic, or too sentimental. But if we scrape back all the wrapping and trappings and tinsel, all the froth and the bubble, even our kitsch devotion, we can see things quite clearly in the light of day. The world only moves forward through simple daily acts of love and open-hearted commitment. The source of this love and commitment is not our own effort or will. Its source is the great loving light, hungry to give of itself the one who comes amongst us in each and every moment in gentle and delicate ways, like the soft and tender presence of a newborn, or like the brilliant and striking light pushing away the darkness. The light of Christmas is every moment. It simply requires our loving response. Tonight we proclaim with a prophet's voice that the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light, a light in all its fervency, its shining, its innocence, and hunger to give of itself. Our task <clears throat> is simply to allow this light to look into our eyes, our hearts, and our souls, and to be loved. And then we are simply to love in return. Responding to the gift of love, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers, on this wonderful night, as we raise our hearts in praise to God, let us pray for a lasting blessing on our church and our troubled world. For the church and our parish communities, that the peace of Christ will enliven the hearts and minds of all, bringing joy and renewed hopefulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Mark, and all the leaders and ministers of the church, that they will continue to be strengthened in their faith and grow in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world shattered by war, environmental destruction, famine and sickness, that light will again shine through the darkness and healing justice dawn among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families the world over, and especially here in this country for whom this Christmas may be difficult and stressful, that this season may bring with it peace of mind <coughs> and mutual understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the suffering, the forgotten, and the lonely, that the miracle of Christ's birth will once more generate hope for better times ahead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those called to the glory of eternal life and for all who mourn for them in this season of joy and blessing, that they will be embraced within the welcoming arms of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your love knows no limits, your compassion no end. Hear the prayers we make as we celebrate your most perfect gift to the human family, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Peace. 
sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, the spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Stephen and St. Mary MacKillop, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray our Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope, Mark our Bishop, Ken and Tim his assistants, the order of bishops or the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We welcome the light that comes into the world. And so now at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. On this great night of festival and rejoicing, let us turn to one another and offer each other a joyful sign of peace.
Son of God, the Son of Mary, the Word made flesh, the Prince of Peace, the Splendor of the Father. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigour from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. This is my fourth Christmas here as Dean of the Cathedral. Uh, the last two, or two of those four, have been under COVID conditions. Uh, so it's great to see a, a full cathedral here tonight without such restrictions, even though the pandemic still lingers in the air. So thank you for coming along and celebrating uh, Christmas Eve here with us, this great feast of the Nativity. You're most welcome to stay for a little while, but we do have another Mass at 7 o'clock, uh, and it'd be good to uh, have the car park available for those who wish to come to the 7 p.m. Mass. Just a note for our, our regulars, please be aware of the change of uh, schedule for the next two weeks, uh, only one Mass at 8am uh, next week between Christmas and, and New Year. My thanks to all those that have been part of the preparations for these Christmas celebrations, uh, our music department, our cathedral office and uh, our uh, sacristy team and servers. Uh, none of this happens just by chance, it's because there's a lot of work that goes into it in the, in the lead-up. So my thanks to, to those that have worked hard over the last couple of weeks preparing for uh, this weekend. Again, uh, a Christmas wish to you, to you all, whether you're locals here or from other parts of the diocese or other parts of, of the nation or other parts of the world. We hope that you feel very much at home here at, uh, at St. Stephen's during this time. And I wish you and your families every joy and blessing for this Christmas season. And I hope that whatever you're doing tomorrow to celebrate uh, is, a, is a, a joyful occasion for you all. The Lord be with you. One thing I did forget to mention is um, an, uh, an important one. We also have an, a leaving collection to support the, the cathedral. We had one collection during mass. We normally would have two uh, often enough. Uh, we have a leaving collection at the doors uh, uh, at the end of Mass. Um, for those of you who live in a cashless world, as many of us do now, there are FPOS machines available. We're, we're advancing and moving into the modern world. Uh, so if you're able to, please support the, the cathedral. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and accept God's blessing. May the light of the Christ child shine brightly around you and dispel all darkness in this world and bless you with the gift of faith. Amen. May the joy of the Christ child lift your spirit as we rejoice at his birth and bless you with the gift of unfailing hope. Amen. May the peace of the Christ child enfold you now and forever and bless you with the gift of God's love. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God come down and rest upon you tonight and always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Happy Christmas, everyone.
I'm well, Carol. Yourself? Nice to see you. You too. So now, I'm the second reader. Oh, you're the second reader. So just turn the page. No. No, that's not it. It's not it. Look, you will use this for the gospel. Use this for the reading. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. Okay, I think that's easy. So I'll, I'll leave it up there, and the gospel they can use. Thank you, actually. Perfect. There's a few, a few hiccups, but we'll, we'll get there. Of course. Nothing ever goes oh. smoothly. I just don't want to fall down. 